it is my pleasure for me to, together with my colleagues, uh, to welcome you in this host room, Future of Toll, and to present you, together with Stefan Gastenmeier, here on stage, and uh, Bankole Ajibaji in the back, our future of toll, and how the elevator industry can keep pace with uh, building design, getting taller and taller. Knowing that elevators have been a limiting factor in the past, therefore, we believe we need multi the next generation vertical transportation system. Well, as you all know, as floor space is the most valuable resource for building developers, this drives us in the elevator industry. How can we increase <clears throat> passenger handling um, capacity? How can we increase space efficiency and minimize the footprint of elevator systems? And therefore, the idea of having more than one cab in one shaft is more than 100 years old, and we even have not been in this business at that time. But the necessary technology was not ready 100 years ago. Mechanical engineering, yes. Electrical engineering, no. There was no destination selection control. There was no safety control available. But 2003, having these two assisting technologies in our hands, we leveraged it and brought TWIN alive. And this was a first huge step in increasing passenger handling capacity and reducing footprint. Well, an even older dream was waking up U.S. architect Daniel E. Condon in 1903. He knew that an ideal system would have multiple cars cycling continuously, which is considered to be the holy grail in our industry. The London engineer, Mr. Hart, came up in the 1880s and invented the Paternoster. I love the Paternoster. And uh, we still operate one of uh, these great systems uh, on our campus um, in the headquarters in Essen. And it's a great old piece of technology. And this actually was a blueprint for our next step we want to make but the paternoster was too slow, not for high-rise applications, and of course not compliant with today's safety standards and regulation. But the next generation vertical transportation will look like it. So now time has come, we say, that all the missing technologies are ready to use and are at home in our integrated and diversified technology company, ThyssenKrupp. For a continuous passenger transportation, we omit the ropes and introduce a variable number of cars. We built on the well-proven safety features of twin, where we have experience over the last 10 years having this system in the market. And we drive this new generation of vertical transportation by linear motor technology. Even more technologies are necessary and in our hands to complete this picture and bring it to life. So multi, 
the next generation with multiple cars. Multiple, very frontal traffic possibilities. Multiple new technologies. Linear drive from Transrapid, which we already apply also in our accelerating moving walks, called Excel. Lightweight design for the cars, not only by using new materials, which uh, we have a lot of research on in our technology center for carbon composites, but also using new engineering methods like uh, topology optimization. But how can we go best into additional, this additional dimension? Moving elevated cars not only vertically, but horizontally into a very horizontal system. This was one of the biggest challenges in our research phase. So for ride comfort reasons and flexibility reasons, we use the linear drive in both directions. Exchangers, how we call it, turn the drive, keep the car vertical, and change the movement from vertical to horizontal. And to be honest, we are extremely surprised how enthusiastic the market reacted on this possibility to move cars horizontally, even transporting people sideways. This we did not expect, but this is one of the outcomes of our global tours to consultants, to customers, and they really ask us um, to focus on horizontal movement and not only on vertical movement. And this opens a completely new dimension of thinking and possibilities for buildings in height and shape. This new generation vertical transportation system is not limiting buildings anymore. What is next? Well, 2016, we want to finish this test tower in southern Germany, Rottweil, and put the first multi on display for test qualification and, of course, certification. So, my regional tour will not lead me to any U.S. city, as maybe uh, you are going, but uh, I will go on Friday to uh, the test tower in Rottweil, which has already reached its uh, final height, uh, to meet my development team for site inspection and make the next step towards our promise uh, to show this at the end of next year. So you can't wait to see it. Well, then um, after the, this session, please uh, meet my colleague, uh, Bankole Ajibaji, here in the back, um, in his 3D immersive simulation environment. Um, and there you can see him not only as a 2D shadow man, like uh, here in the middle of this picture. So he's a specialist on simulating um, immersive and uh, speed up our development process. Have a look there afterwards. In addition, and as a handover to my colleague and uh, specialist in traffic and group control, Stefan Gerstenmeier, I'm allowed and authorized to give you a glimpse into the preparation of our public event next week in Gijon, Spain where we have a prototype of Excel and a scaled mock-up of our multi. So, uh, Jim, would you please um, start this video? And with this, I hand over to Stefan. So we are just preparing a one to three scaled 
multi-system to show the public how we want to do it. It's a two-shaft arrangement, height of 10 meters. Four cars we can operate at the same time, having three uh, levels of exchangers where we can uh, exchange cars from one side to the other. Using linear drives, of course not the final one of the product, but the ones we already implemented in our accelerating um, walkway, the Excel. So the principle is shown here and can be looked at. And uh, some of you I know will be in Spain next week uh, to see this um, great thing. Now in a one-to-one -one it could look like uh, this and uh, Bancole did simulate that. This is um, um, the situation, the concept uh, we had from research. We are already next steps in the development, so it's not the latest uh, status, but um, it shows how it will be arranged in our test tower and uh, what you will be able to see when the test tower will be opened um, end of next year, beginning 2017. With this, um, I hand over to Stefan um, talking about traffic, because that's a very, very important topic on multi. The big question is, um, how can the multi be integrated in a vertical transportation concept? And when we look to um, the classical approach of the vertical transportation in tall buildings, we divide the building in different zones and we have different, different, and different elevator groups and each elevator group is serving the ground terminal floor and the floors that are dedicated to that elevator group. To reduce the elevator footprint in tall buildings, the concept of transfer floors and sky lobbies are misapplied. And mostly double deck lifts are connecting ground terminal floors with sky lobbies. And we have stacked local groups for the, the local transportation. But there is a limit for this shuttle, shuttle elevators. And when the height increases, then the ropes way is, um, there is one issue. Another issue is we need to speed up the cars in order to um, provide um, a good handling capacity and there's a limit um, for the ear pressure for the human comfort. Keeping the concept of the transfer floors and, and the shuttle, up, um, shuttle, shuttle elevators, we come to multi. When we think about multi and look to the horizontal transportation, um, it's kind of similar to, a, to an underground or subway. Multiple trains are using the same, the same rails and are stopping at the same stations and they are running in the same direction on one, on one track. We can have exactly the same thing for multi, we can we use one shaft for one direction, and we can have multiple transfer floors. That means multiple stops. So, and as I said, keeping the concept of the transfer floors and sky lobbies, we still have the the local the local groups, and passengers needs to transfer in the sky lobbies. So it means there's kind of flexibility because um, the, the multi can, or one multi-system can serve multiple sky lobbies. And the, the multi as shuttle is combined with a traditional elevator systems, the machine room less, or um, a twin, it can be destination control or conventional control. To increase the handling capacity of a lift system, 
um, a well-known strategy is to have a double lobby, um, um, double lobby entrance. The main advantage is um, cabins can be loaded um, simultaneously, so that means the stopping time of double the number of passengers is not, is not increasing. And the same idea and the same concept can be applied to multi. And that brings us additional flexibility. On the one hand, we have the double entrance ground lobbies, and we can have double, double lobby, um, um, double sky lobbies. But there's an additional advantage because the cabins are independent from each other. The sky lobbies can be distributed, um, as you can see here. That means Passengers for the upper zone can express through that zone, uh, and the total time to destination um, is, is better for these for these passengers. You can see um, the it as two integrated loops into one multi-system. The main question is, what is the handling capacity? The, quantity of service and what is the quality of service, what's um, mainly the waiting time as a measure. And to show that, I would like to do a little case study. A shuttle application, the multi versus a double deck. I want to have a look at four different traveling heights and each of the system is getting four shafts. Yeah, and there is the first advantage of that, of that comparison um, of the multi, that multi needs less space for the shafts and the waiting area compared um, to a double deck. And the reason of that is the cabins are much smaller. It's eight passengers per cabin, and two times 16 passengers per double-deck car. So the number of cabins for the double-deck is fixed, but for multi, um, it's a variable, because when we increase the traveling height, we can add more cabins. Why do we need to add more cabins? Um, actually, when one car or one or a pair of cars in that case um, depart from the main floor it is necessary that the next two cars are um, already there to arrive at that stop. That means when a round trip of a car is longer because of a higher traveling height We could increase the speed, but we also can add more cabins that we have a continuous flow of um, arriving and departing um, cabins. And of course, the speed, the velocity, it's a variable depending on the traveling height. For the multi, the main driver of adapting the speed is an appropriate traveling time. The double deck has an, an additional driver because it is necessary to bring back the cars as quickly as possible so that um, to achieve um, an appropriate handling capacity. A look at, let's have a look at the chosen speeds. In green color, you can see the double deck speeds for the different tra traveling heights. And we chose 10 meters per second um, with three and 400 meters. And what you can see that we choose a much slower speed for multi. The reason for that, why we can do that, is, um, as I said, we can add more cabins to the system. And so we have a continuous flow of cabins that depart from the main terminal floor. And of course, it's a fixed value for each 
of the traveling heights from, um, for double deck. Let's have a look to the handling capacity. That's one measure um, of these systems. And what we can see is that independent from the traveling height, the multi has always the same handling capacity. And as I said, we can add more cabins and we have a continuous flow of cabins. It's independent from speed and, and the traveling height. Although we increase the speed for double deck lifts, the handling capacity will be lower when we um, increase the traveling height. That could be compensated on the one hand. Yeah, and it can be compensated by an additional shaft at the end. When we would increase the traveling height further, then the gap between the, the multi and the double deck um, would increase. With a traveling height of 200 meters, it's kind of the break even between the two systems. The other measure, it's the quality of service, it's, it's the waiting time. And as we have the continuous flow of um, cabins, we can have um, yeah, um, a very low average waiting time. And again, it is independent from the traveling height. And what's very interesting with that picture or with that graph is that the time to destination, and again, blue is the multi, the time to destination for multi is shorter, although the speed is not that high. What's the reason for that? Of course, one reason is the, um, the very low average waiting time, and the other reason is the optimized or the shorter passenger loading and unloading, because that time is part of the transit time and counts to the time to destination. I come to the um, conclusion, and the multi can reduce the footprint of the elevators, especially in tall buildings. There's no um, restriction in any building heights or traveling heights for the, for the elevators. We have short waiting times, that's what people like. We have, especially with this distributed sky lobbies, a flexible, flexible usage in different traffic concepts. And of course, there's a lot of potential for new traffic concepts. Thanks for listening.